Uh, 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 I'm stumbling around the room. Come from? Where have you been? You do not look well at all. Not one bit. Are you kidding me? Oculus, where are you? Delivery. <laughs> Keeping it. Yeah, it's mine. <laughs> mate, what's Wilson's heart? Well, it looks scary, mate. And the bros at Oculus. Said it's scary, this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mine, yours. What's Wilson's heart, mate? Yeah, exactly. See that, mate? What is Wilson's heart? So, what happened? Well, obviously, we've done a lot of VR stuff over the last 13 months. And noticeable by its absence, we even had the stand for it. This is no joke. We had a stand for it. <laughs> uh, is we didn't get an Oculus. And the Oculus guys got in contact. They reached out and they went, You what? You what? Here's the deal. We'll send you an Oculus. Show it off, show what it can do, because we believe in it, so... We, we'll we will. We will give it a try. We're going to go... Uh, we're not obligated to do anything other than tell the truth, so we're going to do that. So we've got to set the Oculus up. Uh, we've got, like, four games they've sent us to try out. And we're going to start with Wilson's Heart, which is a horror game. So you ready? Come on. <laughs> Join me. All right. Select character. Wilson's heart. Mate. Wilson's heart. Oh. I was, um, when Oculus sent it us, they gave us a big list of like the Oculus uh, games, the, the ones they've published, and they're like, which ones do you want to try? And there's about 20 or so on there. It's like, pick two and, you know, you can, whatever your audience think, uh, you think your audience will like the yeah. most. And uh, flicking through, travel through space. We could have visited <laughs> far off lands, Andy. We could have shot nice. robots and monsters, which we are going to do anyway. Nice. Uh, but then there was Wilson's heart. Horror, psychological, scary. Classic. <laughs> Classic. And you. I was like, yeah, our Love guys that. get a kick out of that. Our guys get a kick out of that. Oh, yeah. So in we went to Wilson's Heart. So this was the first game I played on the Oculus. This was the very first one. Mm -hmm. And the weird thing is, uh, I was dubious because obviously we, we did it without room scale, which is where you can walk around. Yeah. Uh, that's what room scale is in VR, if you're not sure. And uh, that's not what the Oculus does. It's like standing. And it was fine. It was totally fine. Like, occasionally I was, like, moving out of sensor range, uh, for sure. Uh, but then you kind of get used to it after about 10 minutes, and you know your limits and your boundaries of where you can go. Because, where, where obviously, we're adapted to being used to the vibe. Yeah. Uh, and after that, it was fine. So let's talk about the game itself. So what's the plot about it? The, it started so well because it's visually amazing. As all, the, that is the bonus of this, without twisting it and trying to sound like some shill. Is because Oculus have got Oculus published games. Graphically, it's like the PlayStation. They're miles better than the stuff that you get on Steam, which yeah. is like six or seven quid, uh, which is like some devs are working on VR and trying to get it there. So it was gorgeous. It's black and white, which was a really interesting. Interesting. Twist. Yeah, it was really in black and white. And I was chained to a wall, <laughs> uh, which was great. Like, the first thing you have to do is like move your hands around and try and figure out why am I chained to a wall because you're restrained, and then pulling out the pincers like uh, in a hospital. And you're in this old, it almost looks like a castle, but it's like an old hospital. Well, it's set in the 1940s, I believe. It is. It's in the 1940s. It's very old school. And you wake up as Wilson. You are the uh, intrepid Wilson, and you're wearing your hospital gown. And then it does one of the coolest things that we ever saw in one of the PlayStation VR games. It's in the Batman VR games. It gives you a mirror. Uh, it does that very that was early. So yeah, so without spoiling that. what happens in the Batman one, but they give you a mirror as well, which is a really cool scene in that mm -hmm. game. And they did it here, uh, which I haven't seen for a really long time. I don't think I've actually seen that since the Batman VR experience. No, me neither. Uh, and in the mirror, you can move your head and your hands and things like that. And uh, that's when you find out that you are wearing uh, a little apron and there's a big hole around where your heart should be that's been covered up it does look like you've just come out of surgery oh really mm, yeah hey. it does come out of surgery. foreshadowing mate a little yeah a little foresh in fact wilson's heart is the name of the game and essentially the the opening setting of this is you'll bump into a group of people who we thought were very suspicious Right? They did seem that. They, right? We thought they were very, we thought they were liars, like flat out liars. These guys. We thought they were flat out liars. There's one guy who says, "Oh, uh, I was just visiting somebody," but then he kind of indicates that he's not wearing his these own clothes. These aren't his. Yeah. Yeah. Suspect to the max. There's the little girl. Mm, 
and a little girl in a horror game. Uh, and also um, a very interesting stuffed animal. <laughs> <It's evolved in laughs> <so>. <laughs> uh, but what it turns out, actually, the twist on the game is you can... Your heart has been removed. And inside you have a machine. That's what Wilson's heart is. Yeah. Uh, which manipulates the light against the uh, nasties that live in the hospital. And you, you obviously, you're trying to escape the hospital uh, is the general crux of the game. But it's done so in a really nice way, actually. The puzzle sort of made sense. And the way they've done it, Andy, is cool. Is you have an outline. Because obviously this is a game that you can't walk around in. Yeah. So what it does, it gives you outlines of positions you can go to. So if you want to move down a corridor, there'll be a position of the guy down a corridor. If you want to check a door, there'll be a guy in front of the door. And uh, basically you select where you want to go and it kind of warp you to that. Okay. And then uh, you interact with whatever's there and deal with it, like moving your hands, grabbing things, pushing buttons. One thing that was really cool gameplay-wise was using two hands. That's actually super rare in a lot of VR games, yes. is that you're not strong enough to do something with one hand. And it actually baffled me for a while. I thought, oh, I'm sure this is supposed to do something. And then out of just pure, like, almost like real life frustration, is like, I'm just going to try two hands on it. And lo and behold, that works. <laughs> and that brings you back in, because these games are all about immersion. Yes. So that really drags you in when you have this two-handed approach to it. Uh, you're going to go around and solve puzzles and find out about supernatural weird things. But... The the cool thing they did here is you your your silhouette of where you can travel to actually changes color. So if it's Why? dark, uh, if it's dark, it means you've been there and there's probably nothing else you need. Oh, okay. So like if it was like a, a whitish kind of outline, it's like, well, this area is a fresh place that you've not been yet. Yeah. Whereas or if you deviates, missed something. Oh, you've missed something, and if it changes, you've done, you've been here, you've done this. Yeah, there are lots of areas. That's you can awesome. Go, yeah, there was lots of lots of areas because, like I say, graphically, extremely good game. Yeah. Uh, it's beautiful inside VR, which is always the question. Inside there, it's beautiful. It's really good. That's very immersive. Right? Lots of lighting effects and all really nice things that work well. Uh, but the bit, you, there's lots of areas you can go to that actually aren't relevant to progressing the story, which is great because you want to explore around this old abandoned hospital, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be seeing what's going on there, uh, certainly when the nasties turn up. And if you get stuck, which I did at one point, I was like, I think we've done everything. I can't see where else we're to go. Then you might see a silhouette that's actually white again, and you're like, oh, maybe I picked up something in my inventory that actually works here. Maybe I've got some matches now. Maybe I've got a screwdriver. Maybe I've got something which allows me to keep going. So we weren't stuck for long, uh, which is, I, I, I think we got stuck once for a couple of minutes, and then it's like it all made sense once we actually got it. Yeah. yeah, the story of it, though, was interesting. Interesting, because this is, this is so rare. It's like, this is why Resident Evil 7 stands out so strong in the horror VR experience. Because the VR horror stuff tends to be jump scare stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, either that or they don't quite go far enough with making the scary atmosphere. It's all about the atmosphere. Yeah, it's 100% that. It's 100% that. Even in games that aren't horror in virtual reality, once you are immersed, and you are obviously a much more immersed than looking at a monitor, once you're immersed, it doesn't take a lot to give it, but if you do it right, it's horrifying. And it's beautiful because you really forget good. you're in VR. Yeah. Like the quicker you can get the person to forget they're wearing a headset, the better. Yep. And not having prompts and stuff, and having and having full arms instead of just hands, which I really appreciate in any VR game. A VR game that actually does it is you have full arms. And you can kind of see your torso in a lot of ways. If you look down, you'll see feet. Your brain will interpret it as well with your motion most yeah, of the time. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It all arm. falls into place and it keeps that realism going, despite the fact that you know you're in a virtual world, but you forget for a while. That's what you're this aiming awesome. for. And this one nailed it. It really did nail it. And that's what I, I was really surprised by. I was expecting what we traditionally get, which is kind of low res, kind of interesting VR experiences, which uh, you can kind of, uh, with our level of experience, you kind of see a lot of it coming. Yeah. Right? You kind of know that if you see a bathtub with a curtain, it's probably not behind the curtain, but it will be behind you after you open the curtain. At some point, it's going to be there. Yeah, because uh, the classic VR horror trope is just to have things behind you mm -hmm. uh, because they can spawn things in really close to you without you looking, because they know you're not looking in that direction. That's what I love about VR games. I mean, you, you, you can do it on regular games as well, but to actually achieve it in VR with actual active head aiming is the double take scene change. Yeah. Well, looking one way, looking back, and then back to position one, 
And it's completely yep. different. Something scene. Resident Evil Scary. 7 did multiple yeah. times. And uh, even Outlast 2, which is what I was hoping that I'd get a VR experience in some way, because they had this awesome transition system that was going on there. And yeah. this is no different. They they nailed it. And they're, they're actually, what kind of worked out better uh, in some ways is that they because they, the character has set positions he can be in, like say you move between silhouettes because you don't walk around in this one, um, is that they can definitely do lots of things in different areas that you can't see because your character will port to an area and be facing one way. Yeah. Now, on the flip side of that, as always, I like the freedom <laughs> to walk around. I think that is very cool when you can actually walk around and interact with various things. But there's definitely pros to having it not be that way and then go, well, you're definitely going to be here so we can do things elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Pros of the game then, my friend. Pros of the game. Beautiful. Beautiful, and it, that's a big yeah, deal in from VR. The outside, it's a big it deal. It's immersive really nicely. It's from clean even from the inside. It's clean. You can't see the pixelation. You can't really. You can't see all that stuff. It's beautiful. It responds really well. Like the mirror scene alone was so accurate to what my face was doing. Yeah. And then seeing a character talking. The pros that the, on top of that, the story. The story's great. Really cool. Really enjoyed the idea of, uh, are you telling the truth? Are you not telling the <laughs> truth? Uh, where are we going with it? And then the supernatural twist they had on it. Yep. Uh, the only cons is occasionally, and this kind of happens with um, some VR games sometimes, is when you're porting to certain areas. Uh, if you're not walking there manually, then and you're porting to a place, sometimes you end up kind of just inside the objects. And yep. this one had a really weird effect when we went inside the I was going to say that as my yeah, con. It, it did make very strange effect. to me. Uh, like uh, you were traveling through time or something like that. They One of them, bubbles. like you went through the cupboard, like a, a cabinet, a bathroom cabinet, and your head went through the door. But when it was inside it, it was just like bubbles of like a carbonated drink. Yeah, it was very strange. strange. Very, very strange. And again, the other one where I was traveling through space, I wasn't sure that I'd actually stood in any terrain. It looked like something was <laughs> going like to it happen, was part didn't of the it? Game. Yeah. So I stood in there and I was like, oh, this is really cool. <laughs> and then it was like, no, your head's just. Your head's in the head's door, idiot. Yeah, your head's in the door. So <laughs> there's always that wonkiness because obviously, as you stood up, uh, it's trying to say, well, you're probably in the center, but if you're not in the dead center, then suddenly you're just in a door and you've yep. got to kind of back out for a second. Uh, I always kind of list that as a con because it's very, it does bring you back out of it. There's no getting away from it. It oh, brings no, you absolutely. back out of it. But at the same time, they can't really put a real door in front of you. So if you, <laughs> you know I mean? if you went into it, someone should run up and slap you with a piece of wood. That'd be funny. That's That'd be problem. real funny. Wilson's heart, guys. Watch out for that one. I'm uh, seeing the end of this. I, I think we're going to stream it. Yeah, because we we have to. It we've looks streamed so a few good. V horror VRs recently that we've. Um, not enjoyed that much. No, they've been really hit and miss. Exactly, which is why we decided to do this one off stream, and uh, we were like, okay, we're going to stream this. Let's do it. This has got a place. Let's do it. Strange. Scary. Streaming it, mate. Had a well good jump scare. Yeah, we are, gonna, we are going to stream this one. This was surprisingly good. It's, it really took me back. Uh, I'm not trying to be offensive, Oculus. It took me back to when we tried the PlayStation. The, the, the exclusive games they have there are just... They're so crisp compared to what we generally get when we're pulling just games off Steam that we try out, which are, you know, they're generally like 40 minutes long or something, if, if that sometimes. Like, we played um, The Exorcist a couple of weeks back, and we got 35 minutes out of it, something like that. The first, yeah. Yeah, did, that was two, two of the chapters. chapters. Yeah, that was two of the chapters, and then we got into here. But first time with the Oculus, I mean, obviously, Oculus have asked us to make this video, so I've got to talk about that, uh, it was okay. It wasn't bad at all, actually. Even standing, I'm used to being able to walk around, obviously, um, but I got very quickly used to not doing that and using the system that was there. So I actually had no issue with that at all, surprisingly. I was expecting to be like, walk, 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 but it wasn't like that at all. I just, I was, as long as I can wiggle around, which you can absolutely do. Do you know what I liked about it is the fact that, because I've played another game on it while we were setting up and testing, and the fact that you have, you have a limited range to actually walk around in, but the way that they've put mechanics into these games, and they were both different from the one that I played and from Wilson's Heart, mm -hmm. of how you navigate is, is pretty clever to be fair. Oh, we're going to look at that one next. It's for me that one, it? Is it is for you, it is one. for you. You could tear the heads off robots in that one, <laughs> so we're going to be in that. But that's Wilson's Heart. Wilson's Heart is pretty solid, so if you look into that, check out the Oculus link down below, because they're doing, they sent us a nice link for you guys to check out. See you later. Bye-bye.